Hi everyone, it's Phil Frost from Main Street ROI, and I want to welcome you to today's training about the five steps to get your business ranking on the first page of Google. And I also want to thank Heyo for organizing this presentation. And we have some housekeeping to get out of the way first. If you're new to GoToWebinar, then I want to urge you to post questions in the, uh, the Q&A box or the questions box. That should be in the upper right hand corner of your screen. And I always recommend you turn off distractions. You'll get the most out of this presentation. If you're not also trying to check email, uh, check Instant Messenger and scroll through your Facebook feed. And before we kick this off, I want to see who's on today. So I have a couple polls. And this first one here, you should see it on your screen. It says, are you currently working with an SEO agency or a consultant? And uh, one of those answers is we are an agency or I am a consultant. I find that when we put these uh, presentations on, a lot of the attendees um, are actually agencies and consultants, which is the case here. Looks like about 31% are agencies or consultants. Uh, about 10% about are working with an agency or consultant. And it looks like most people voted. So let me close that out. And the next poll here, just to get a feel for the uh, size of your SEO campaigns. And you can see what is your current or anticipated monthly SEO budget from less than 500 all the way up to over $3,000 a month. And uh, let's see, they're rolling in now. Got 75% less than 500. So that dropped down to 70%, and then about 10%, 500 to 1,000, 13%, 1,000 to 2,000, and 8% uh, over 3,000. That's probably the uh, agencies and consultants. All right, most people have voted. All right, I just have one final poll. And this is to see what other digital marketing channels are you currently using? So in addition to SEO, are you using Google AdWords or Bing advertising, Facebook advertising, email marketing, social media, or other? And if you do select other, if you can just type that into the Q&A box. And I am uh, pleasantly surprised to see a lot of folks on the line using email marketing, upwards of uh, 70%, which is great to see. <clears throat> I'm a huge fan of email marketing. And uh, it's good to see a lot of businesses are using that. 76% Facebook advertising, 37% Google ads and, uh, and or Bing ads, and 60% uh, are using social media. And again, most people have voted, so I'll close that out. And we will move on. Okay, here's what we're going to cover. First, I want to go through some important Google updates that uh, I think every business should understand, especially if you want to be successful with SEO. So we'll go through a uh, just a brief history of uh, of Google. So you see that see where it uh, where the algorithm originated, how it, how they built that, and then kind of some of the the important changes over time that affect uh, SEO. And a lot of those updates that Google have uh, have made to the algorithm over time have uh, have made a lot of the old SEO tactics useless. And I'm actually going to cover three what I call old school SEO tactics that you want to avoid. They no longer work. And I'll talk about two tactics you can use to get ranked in as little as 30 days. Uh, SEO is known as more of a, a long-term strategy, but there are some shortcuts, and I'll walk through two of those today. And I'll obviously go through the five steps. And then at the end, I do have a special offer for the, all the attendees to help you get started today. Now, if this is your first Main Street ROI training, you're probably wondering, who the heck am I, and why should you even listen to me? Well, again, my name is Phil Frost. I'm the founder of Main Street ROI. And our business provides digital marketing services like SEO, 
as well as uh, online advertising in Google, Bing, and Facebook. And we also provide email marketing and social media services. And in addition to services, we also uh, tr provide training like this training you're on today. We, uh, we do a, a ton of free presentations. Uh, we publish a lot of free information on our blog. And then we do uh, more in-depth training uh, and those are paid trainings. You can actually go to MainStreetROI.com forward slash training and see a lot of our courses that we've published. And to date, we've helped over 2,000 businesses with their digital marketing, and my thought leadership has been featured in Forbes, Inc., Amex, as well as Mashable. This is my favorite slide right here. I'm also the proud father of uh, two kids. Two kids so far. Uh, Violet on the left, she is four and a half years old. Uh, that's my chubby son Emmett on the right. He's just over two. So he's now in his terrible twos. And my beautiful wife Erin in the middle. And this picture was taken at uh, uh, my son's two year birthday party in April, so pretty recent, in the upper west side of Manhattan, which is uh, near where we live. I did see a question come in here from uh, Golnaz. Can we get the recorded version? Yes, you will. Get a, uh, you'll get the replay as well as the slides. And we typically send that out within about 24 hours after we uh, complete the training. All right. So I mentioned this. I want to give you a, a brief history. I think this is really important so that you understand uh, uh, how to be successful with SEO. All right, so way back in the day, some of the older folks on the line will remember the Alta Vista days. Alta Vista was uh, one of the first search engines. And uh, back then, SEO was, was pretty straightforward. <clears throat> the way the search engine worked, it would look for words on the page. And uh, if you had the keyword on your page more frequently than anyone else did on their pages, your page would most likely rank high in the search result. So it's basically just looking at what's considered on-page SEO or on-page factors. So just looking at your site, are you mentioning that phrase or that word more often than other websites? That's, it was super straightforward to get your site ranked, but uh, on the flip side, the problem there was that a lot of the search results were full of spam. So you'd get a lot of irrelevant search results, and uh, if you remember those days, I do, uh, you try to do some research online, and it was pretty annoying. You'd, you'd do a pretty straightforward search, and you'd get, uh, you know, maybe a couple good results, but a lot of junk, and then uh, another problem back then, you'd actually get uh, porn sites ranking on the first page, uh, even when you're doing research for uh, a paper that you're trying to write for school. So it was a uh, not a, not a good time for uh, for search engines. A lot of spam, and that was why you know Google entered the market to really they they came with a solution to clean up the search results, just make them uh, uh, better uh, uh, a better user experience for all the searchers. Uh, so they came with a, a twist on the algorithm. They didn't just look at the words on the website. They also looked at how many other websites were linking to your website. And that was a, a, a key difference in how the search engine worked. And uh, it's really the, the foundation of how Google works. They look at how many other websites are linking to your website. And they consider a link basically a vote in your favor. So if you have a, a website that is getting uh, a lot of links to it, that uh, Google looks at that and says, okay, you, uh, a lot of other websites recognize you as an authority and you deserve to rank high. And if you think about it, if you ever link out to another website, it's because you like that website. Um, you know, you're not linking out to websites that you don't like. So it is a, a good signal for Google to use. And it really did work. It cleaned up the search engines, or cleaned up the, the search results and uh, Google quickly became the, the number one search engine available, and they are still number one to this day. And here's a, a key takeaway 
that I hope you remember from this training is that Google depends on the ad revenue from people clicking on ads in their search results. So if you do a search, you go to google.com, type something in there, and you will likely see ads at the top of the page. And you'll likely see anywhere from three, anywhere from one to four ads at the top of the page. And people do click on those ads, and that's how the, the majority of Google's revenue is coming in from people clicking on those ads. Today, we're not talking about that, that's uh, Google AdWords advertising. We're talking about getting your website to rank naturally. But the way, why this is important is because people are coming to Google because the search results are so good and they are getting uh, relevant, useful information from Google. And if they don't get relevant, useful information, uh, if they start seeing spam in the search results, that's essentially a threat to Google's business model because those folks will move to a different search engine and start to use Bing or Yahoo or some other uh, third uh, tier search engine. So that's a, a, a key point here because that's why Google works so hard and, and hires um, you know, some of the smartest people in the world to come work for their company to make sure that their search results are the best they can possibly be. Because again, they want to retain their user base and they want to grow their user base so that more and more people use Google, more and more people click on those ads, and that's what drives their revenue. <clears throat> and Maria, we will uh, send a replay. So don't worry about that. We'll be sending the replay and the slides. Okay, so because of uh, uh, the, the kind of quest for cleaning up the search engines, Google has released um, a lot of what they call Google updates. They, they change their algorithm. They're continually making uh, tweaks to it. And one important one was what's called the Panda update. And don't get, get too hung up on the names here. I don't know where they came up with these names, but uh, they, somebody out there named it and they called it the Panda update. And uh, the, really the goal with this update was to get rid of the websites that were ranking high that were giving Google's users a bad experience. Because again, that is a threat to Google's business model. Obviously, they take that very seriously. They wanna weed out any search results that don't belong on the first page. So this was the Panda update. And it was really targeting sites that had poor quality content. And you've, if you've done any research into SEO, you've kind of come across this idea that content is king and you need really high quality content. And that's, that's why, um, you know, ever since the Panda update, the, you can't get away with poorly written content. It really needs to be high quality, grammatically correct. Uh, Google is actually looking for that as a signal and uh, the higher quality, the better. Uh, and really you can't get away with just cranking out low quality content and, and hoping that that's going to rank. Next important update that you should be aware of is the Penguin update. And there have been several Penguin updates over the past uh, few years. And this was targeting sites that were getting links unnaturally. So you'll remember in the last slide, I said Google's algorithm was really built on this idea that they looked at how many other sites were linking to your site. Now, once business owners figured that out, they obviously uh, took that to the extreme and tried to get their sites to rank high by basically building other websites to link to their main website. So that's what a lot of businesses did. Um, and there's actually networks out there of websites and you can pay money and get them to link to your website. Now I'm certainly not recommending that I'm actually recommending against that, and we'll get to that later. Um, but now you understand why those uh, link networks even exist in the first place. They, they, they did work, and that's what uh, I would call an old school tactic. This whole uh, you know link schemes. Uh, that's what a lot of businesses did. Google started to figure that out because again, they don't want websites on the first page of Google if they don't belong there. 
and uh, a lot of websites did not belong there. They didn't have really good uh, content. Uh, all they did was build up these unnatural links. And the, the Penguin update was really targeting those sites. <clears throat> all right, the next update here is Google+. Plus. I put this on here uh, because I believe in the future social signals will become more and more important. And uh, you could basically debate that uh, uh, endlessly. Um, but the reality is Google did launch Google+, Plus, and then they uh, took resources away from it. And then more recently, they started putting more resources back into Google+. Plus. I believe that is a, an indication that, uh, that Google's trying to use uh, uh, social, so, social signals in their algorithm and, and trying to figure out how to do that. Because if you think about it, social uh, is a positive signal in addition to uh, other websites linking to your website. And the last important update that I want to talk about today is the Hummingbird update. And that highlights the fact that Google now understands context and synonyms. And the example I like to use is if you're just walking down the street, let's say you're visiting a new city, and uh, you're not sure where to eat, you might do a search for uh, best places to eat um, or best places to eat nearby. And to uh, a human, that's a very simple question. We know how to answer that. But to an algorithm, to a computer program, that's actually pretty hard and, and complicated to understand because you have to understand the context and you have to understand synonyms to understand that that person that's typing in uh, best places to eat is actually looking for a restaurant. And then you have to basically translate that question into <clears throat> what are the best restaurants near that person's physical location. And Google does, that, does have the ability to do that ever since they released the Hummingbird update. <clears throat> okay, now based on those updates, there are some old school tactics that I want to make sure you avoid. And these, uh, unfortunately, there are businesses still doing these tactics. And uh, unfortunately, there's, there's even agencies and consultants recommending this. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping after this training, you will steer clear. And the first one is over-optimized web pages. And I, I get this question all the time. Um, basically, it's, you know, what's the best keyword density for a web page? And as soon as I hear that question, I know that uh, uh, you're just in the wrong mindset as far as SEO. Because that, once you start getting into keyword density, you're starting to go down the road of what, what, what I'm calling over-optimizing your web pages. So on your, your web pages, there are some important elements where you want to make sure your keyword is listed, and I'm going to get to that later. But for the most part, when you're writing the content on your page, the, the core of your page, you want to be writing naturally, and you really want to be writing for your prospective customers, not for Google. And you, you really want to you know, research how to, how to write sales copy and focus it more on, uh, on sales copy than on, on SEO copy. So write naturally, <clears throat> uh, write for your prospects, don't write for Google. Uh, you certainly don't want to unnaturally keyword stuff or try to just squeeze your keyword into the copy. Don't even worry about it. Again, if you do this correctly, the, you, you shouldn't have to worry about it when you're writing the, the core copy on your page. And ultimately, you want to be thinking about providing valuable information and making sure you're providing the information that a, the searcher wants to find. Because ultimately, that's what Google wants to rank high. Again, they, they want to satisfy the user so that the user keeps coming back. And they hope that that user will come back and click on ads. Because again, that's, how, that's what drives Google's revenue. Right, the second old school tactic you want to avoid is what I'm calling self-created links. I already talked about this a little bit. So you, first of all, you don't want to buy links. If Google finds out that money was exchanged for a particular link, they will—they uh, basically won't count that link in their algorithm. 
so it, it's basically worthless for SEO once they figure that out. Uh, you also don't want to get links from irrelevant websites um, just because your, uh, your your uncle or your, your cousin works at a car dealership and can add a link to your jewelry store website doesn't mean you should do it. Uh, it doesn't mean it's going to help you for SEO because that's basically an irrelevant website um, and it, it looks unnatural. And any unnatural links are red flags to Google and they could really more likely get you into trouble than they are going to help you. This next bullet point here is about anchor text, which is a little bit technical, but it's it's pretty straightforward. So I have I have an example here, uh, day spa. You can see it's in blue font and it's underlined. Most people now know that's a hyperlink or a link. So if you click, if that was on a web page, and you clicked on day spa, it would take you to the day spa website. So Google looks at anchor text. That is one of the signals that they use. They read that and they now uh, determine that the page that's being linked to is relevant to that keyword day spa. So naturally, once you understand that, you could uh, take this to the extreme and get hundreds or even thousands of links with the keyword that you want to rank for as a, an attempt to rank higher for that keyword. And that is, in fact, what a lot of businesses did uh, not too long ago. Um, and uh, agencies were doing that for clients. And that did work. That was actually a really good tactic. But uh, now that's a, a, a big red flag for Google ever since the, the Penguin update. That's something they definitely look for. If a lot of your links have the exact same anchor text, then that uh, is obviously unnatural. It's not very likely that that would just naturally happen that all these websites would link to your site with the exact same phrase. Google knows that. Uh, so if you go down that path, that's an old school tactic that will likely get you into a, uh, a penguin penalty. So you want to avoid that. And what this ultimately comes down to is that you want to focus on sharing content on your site rather than trying to build links um, uh, and try to create links unnaturally. So it's kind of a slippery slope. Once you start thinking along the lines of creating your own links uh, or, or building your own links, because a lot of times that's that leads you down this path that will likely get you into trouble. So focus more on sharing really good content on your website. Think about what could you publish on your site that other websites in your industry would actually want to link to. I do see some, some questions coming in, and if they're not urgent, I am going to push them to live Q&A, uh, but I will try to address anything uh, that uh, is uh, fairly quick and easy. Okay, so the third old school tactic is unnecessary SEO web pages. Uh, we'll talk more about this later, but you, you wanna be creating just one page for uh, what I'm calling a keyword theme or a group of keywords, a group of similar keywords. Uh, so you don't wanna create multiple pages for very similar keywords. And we'll stick to the same day spa example. Here are two different or unique keywords for a day, day spa, day spa in NYC versus NYC day spa. Uh, those are different keywords that you could find doing research. Uh, however, uh, somebody searching day spa in NYC is likely lo looking for the exact same thing that someone searching NYC day spa is looking for, and Google knows that. So ultimately, you just need one page on your site to rank for both of those keywords. So that's what I mean by unnecessary SEO pages. Uh, this is a frequently asked question that I get. You know, should I be creating pages on my site for every different variation of a keyword? And uh, back in the day, that actually was a good tactic uh, because Google didn't really understand context and synonyms and, and wasn't able to understand that, you know, those 
two different keywords are actually the same thing. They're look, they have the same intent. They, the one page would satisfy uh, both people searching. Uh, now they do understand that, so it's not necessary to create different pages for every single variation of a keyword. And I do want to show you what can happen if you do that, because uh, I think it was about a year ago, right when we started working with a client, they had created, uh, we actually didn't know this when we started working with them until we got this alert, they had created all these different uh, subdomains on their site, which are basically just uh, different pages on their site, trying to target um, the, the same keyword, but in different geographic locations. So the, the equivalent example would be, I'm in New York City, um, be trying to target uh, a day spa in Brooklyn, day spa in Queens, day spa in uh, Bronx. So basically the same keyword, but you're trying to target it in different locations. Uh, and what they did was they just copied the exact, the, the page onto all of these different pages. <clears throat> and that was their shortcut. And Google figured out, hey, all you're doing is copying these pages. And what they, this is the alert they got. It says Google has detected thin content on your site that provides little or no added value. And this critical issue results in irrelevant or low value search results for Google search users and can negatively impact your site's rankings. So Google applied a manual spam action. And uh, what we had to do is actually clean that up and remove all of that duplicate content because not only is it unnecessary, but it was also getting that uh, particular client into trouble with Google and lowering their rankings. So if you go down that path, so again, that's an old school SEO tactic of creating lots of pages with poor quality content or even duplicate content, uh, that can lead to a manual spam action. All right, before we get to the five steps, I do wanna quickly go through a couple of predictions so you can see where, where I believe SEO is headed. So this is a super safe prediction here. Google will continue to fight SEO spam uh, everyone should now know why um, SEO spam is a, a threat to Google's business model because uh, that hurts the user experience, which could mean Google would lose their user base, which would ultimately mean they lose revenue. So they're going to continue to look for keyword stuffing, unnatural inbound links, and unnecessary pages. Now, if you're not familiar with mobile, <coughs> um, I'm not sure where you've been, but uh, mobile has been on the rise, and uh, it actually there's more people now going to Google on their mobile devices than on their desktop um, computers now. So that's I believe that's a pretty uh, crazy stat because when I started in uh, 2006, all we had to worry about were desktop computers. Uh, now it has actually flipped, and uh, a lot of web development companies are focusing first on the mobile site and really then secondarily focusing on the desktop site because more people are using mobile. And uh, just a heads up that Google's index is actually going to change in the near future. Nobody knows exactly when, but uh, in, within the next year or so, Google's going to move to a mobile first index. And what that means is Google will uh, first go to the mobile version of your site to look and see if you deserve to rank number one or where you should rank in the search results versus what they're doing now and what they've always done in the past is go to your desktop uh, version first. So it's kind of flipping, whereas uh, when I started in 2006, you would first go to the desktop computer and look, uh, that's actually going to change. It's going to be a, this, this mobile first world where Google's actually gonna look at your mobile site first. And also, lo because of that, local signals are rising in, in importance. Uh, what that means is uh, more people are um, searching on their phones, and Google does take into account the location of, of uh, the search, and then customizes the search results based on your location. And I already mentioned this, I do predict that social signals will become more important 
uh, in the years to come. And ultimately, one big takeaway here would be um, SEO is not about tricking Google. That's a big misconception. I hear that a lot. That uh, you know, to get ranked high, it's really a matter of tricking Google's algorithm and you know, staying one step ahead of Google. That's not really what this is about. It's really about partnering with Google. Once you realize Google's goals, which is just to you know maintain their user base, grow their user base, drive more revenue through uh, through advertising. So we need as businesses to then partner with Google. How are we going to um, give Google what they want? Give their searchers what they want? Give Google something that they would want to rank high because it's going to retain their user base. All right, so with that in mind, let's dive into the five steps. These are, they're all going to start with the, with the letter R, so you can uh, easily remember this by uh, the five R's. The first one here is research. And with, uh, with search, marketing, or SEO, it all starts with keyword research. We want to figure out what are our prospective customers typing into Google to look for our products and services. And the tool I recommend is Google's own keyword planner tool. And you can uh, find the tool by going to google.com and just type in uh, keyword planner tool. It should be the first result. Then you have to jump through a couple hoops. If you don't already have a Google AdWords account, you'll have to go ahead and uh, set one of those up. You don't have to advertise, so don't worry about that. If you're not already advertising, don't worry. You don't have to spend any money but you do have to create a Google AdWords account to be able to use the Keyword Planner tool. And the other little twist, which was fairly recent, Google uh, decided if you're not advertising and not spending a lot on the ads, then uh, Google no longer shows you a number for the search results, they show you a range. So for a particular keyword, um, where let's say it's searched 200 times a month. Um, if you're not advertising in Google AdWords, it might say instead of 200, it might say a range of uh, 100 to 300, something along those lines. So I know that sounds <clears throat> like a big deal, but I actually don't think it is uh, because the keyword planner, planner tool and really any keyword tool is not perfect. And you, don't, you shouldn't even get bogged down in the actual number. So just because it says 200 people search that keyword doesn't literally mean exactly 200 people search. Google's obviously rounding up and down. So uh, what you want to use the Keyword Planner tool uh, for is to obviously find relevant keywords. And then you want to look at the relative searches when you're comparing keywords. Uh, if, if some keywords you, that you find are searched a thousand times or ten thousand times a month. Well, there's obviously more search volume than a, a keyword that where the tool is telling you they're only searched 50 times. But don't get caught up in the exact number of 50 uh, or a thousand. Uh, really, just use it more for the uh, the relative searches. You obviously want to focus more on keywords that are have search volume greater than zero. That uh, means that either no one is searching or very few people are searching. And then most important here is that you want to focus on what's called buying intent. And there's really two types of keywords that you'll find when you're doing your research. You'll find research intent keywords and buying intent keywords. And research intent keywords, uh, you want to think of this like a, like a scale. You know, let's say on the left is research intent, on the right, is uh, buying intent. Every keyword is going to fall somewhere on that sliding scale, and you want to find the keywords that are mo most likely on the right side, on that buying intent side. And I have an example here, Dayspawn NYC versus best facial for acne. I think this is a good example where you can, you can see that Dayspawn NYC, or I hope you can see, falls more on the right side of that spectrum. It's, there's more buying intent. Um, another way to look at it is ask the question, what else could they be searching for? 
and there's not much else someone could be searching for if they're searching day spa in NYC they're you know most likely looking for a day spa versus best facial for acne they could certainly be looking for a day spa but what else could they be looking for they could be looking for just a product um a, you know even uh you know something that they could just go to uh their local um you know Dwayne Reed or, or or Rite Aid down the street and and pick it up but they're not necessarily looking for a day spa so hopefully that clears up buying intent versus research intent um and then the final question here when you're doing your keyword research is just do you deserve to be number one so do you actually offer the information the product or the service that that person is searching for and uh, if you're not then or or you don't have it on your site yet you certainly would need to add that page so that you now have that information or you have that product that service um, or if you don't have it you're not going to add the page then uh, it's really not worth going after you're not going to rank for it all right step number two is relevance at this point you will have done your keyword research and you know uh, what are the relevant buying intent keywords and now you want to make your website relevant to those keywords <clears throat> it's really marketing 101 if you learn if you took a marketing class you learned how you need to match the message to the market and that's what we're doing here we know what the market is searching and we need to match the message on our site to what they're searching I mentioned this earlier you're going to find a lot of keywords in your keyword research and the next step there would be to group them and group them by similar phrases and then once you have all the similar phrases grouped together you're going to pick just one page on your site to target that group of similar phrases and again if you do this right and you pick just one page on your site or you build a new page to target those that handful of keywords then when you're writing the content of your site what I call body copy you don't even really need to think about the uh, the keywords that you're you're trying to rank for <clears throat> because you're going to have just one page on your site focused on those keywords so naturally the content on that page is going to be about those keywords so I bring that up because I don't want you to focus on the body copy instead where I do want you to focus is on the title of the page and the headers of the page those are two critical areas that Google is going to look at to determine if your page is relevant when a keyword is searched so the title of the page in HTML is in the uh, the parentheses there those are the HTML tags if you're not familiar with that this is something that's super basic for any web developer they can go in and quickly edit the titles of your pages and you want to make sure that your target keyword is in the title of your page and uh, the analogy I like to use for titles is like a chapter in a book or like a, a chapter in a textbook <clears throat> and when you go to uh, the table of contents in a textbook and you look at the uh, the different chapters and you're trying to do some research you can uh, scan the chapters uh, read them and quickly find you know which chapter you'll be able to find the answer to your question and that's similar to what Google's doing so they have an index of just millions and millions of websites and what they can do is kind of use the titles of those pages like the table of contents and if your uh, your title has the keyword that people are searching then that's a, a quick way for Google to say okay I found a page on the site that is relevant for this keyword and and that's that's what they're they do they they use the title as a, a very strong signal to determine if your page is relevant and they also use the headers and I put the header tags in there h1 h2 h3 uh, basically the the h1 is the main header of the page and then the h2 h3 those are kind of like subheaders 
and you want to put uh, your your target keyword or a variation of your target keyword in the headers of your page as well. And then again, I can't emphasize this enough, when you write the body copy, you want to write that naturally, and you really want to focus more on the sales copy elements than uh, you don't really want to be focused on SEO. And here's the what I call the golden rule of relevance. You want to create the web page that you yourself would want to find if you were the one searching the keyword. So it's a great exercise to put yourself in the prospect's shoes when they're doing that search. What is it that they really want to find? And uh, you can take that to the next step and actually look at what's already ranking. And that's what Google thinks is a, a really good fit and what people want to find. And then you can uh, uh, look at all of the, the top ranking web pages and basically make a better page than what's already ranking. And that's a great tactic to uh, overtake who's already ranking. All right, step three is reputation. At this point, you've done the keyword research. <clears throat> you found what people are searching. You made your web pages relevant. So Google knows that you do have a relevant page, but what it comes down to uh, is your reputation because that will determine how high you will rank versus all the other relevant web pages. So when we talk about reputation, there's another term that you'll likely find. It's called domain authority. And we're talking about the same thing here. Uh, and the number one factor in your online reputation is the quantity and quality of links from other websites. And this is really reputation by association. It's very similar to the real world. If, uh, if you meet someone new and they're hanging out with um, you know, famous people that you respect and like and trust, then that new person you will likely uh, like and, and, and immediately trust just because they're associated with those other folks. On the flip side, if you meet a new person and he's hanging out with a lot of shady people that you don't like and don't trust, then you will likely not like and not trust that new person right away because of who they're associated with. Google uses that same um, uh, analysis basically when they are determining the reputation of your website. If you are hanging out and getting links with other websites that are reputable and that Google thinks has good reputations, that will uh, lead to your website also having a strong reputation. And again, the flip side is true as well. If you're getting links from spammy websites or if you did a lot of spammy SEO in the past and got really bad links, then unfortunately Google will look at your website and think that you also have a, a bad reputation. And I just want to emphasize this again, you want to focus more on attracting links with really good content on your site versus buying or creating links yourself. All right, I went through the first three tactics. <clears throat> now that you understand that, I want to go through a couple uh, tactics you can use to get ranked in 30 days or less and then I'll jump back to the final two steps. So this first tactic here, it's called piggyback SEO. And what you're going to do is piggyback on another website or other websites that ha already have high authority or, um, or strong reputations. What you're going to do is publish content on those websites with the keyword that you wanna rank for in the title of the page. Now, if that doesn't make sense, I will show you some examples, and this will definitely clarify things. Here's a screenshot of a, excuse me, a Google search for how to create a Google AdWords campaign. And ranking number three, when I took this screenshot, was a, a website, uh, an article that I wrote and published on the website kissmetrics.com. And you can see the title is uh, that's what the, the first line is. That's what you click in Google, that's the link. It says how to create a profitable Google AdWords campaign. And it says dot, dot, dot. 
It actually is uh, from scratch. That's the full title. So the title includes how to create a Google AdWords campaign. The search in Google is how to create a Google AdWords campaign. It's basically a perfect match. So Google knows right away that's a highly relevant article because the title matches the search almost perfectly. And then uh, Kissmetrics already has a strong reputation in Google's eyes. So because of those two factors, it ranks high and it's ranking number three for that search. Here's another example, just so that you can see it works for lots of different types of keywords. So this is uh, someone searching now Google AdWords campaign. And again, Google AdWords campaign is in the title of the article. This is the same exact article, how to create a profitable Google AdWords campaign from scratch. It's published on the same site, kissmetrics.com. So it has a strong reputation already. And because the keyword is in the title, it's extremely relevant. And obviously the article, uh, by the nature of that topic, is going to mention Google AdWords campaign. So I didn't have to think about that. Uh, you know, I just wrote the article naturally um, about that topic. I uh, wasn't thinking about SEO except for the title of the article, which is optimized for SEO. Okay, so that's piggyback SEO. That's a great tactic if you are just getting started because your website, uh, unfortunately, all websites start with um, basically zero reputation. Um, and that's you know how people start as well. <laughs> when you're, you're uh, let's say, new, uh, working in a new industry, you don't have a, a reputation in that industry. You know, you're starting out at, at square one, at zero. And then uh, it takes time to build up your own personal reputation. And the same thing is true online. Google doesn't just start trusting brand new websites right away. It does take time for them to um, learn to, uh, to trust your website. All right, tactic number two is what's called local SEO. It's basically a, a subset of SEO. And it's, um, if you do a Google search for dentist nearby or hardware store nearby, you will definitely see local search results and you'll see a map. You'll see um, the location of the nearby stores or offices. And then uh, below the map, you'll actually see the names of the businesses as well as the business info. And this is, um, this is basically a huge opportunity if you're looking for local customers, patients, clients. That's because 30% of mobile searches are local. 76 of mobile nearby searches actually lead to a, a store visit. That's like the hardware store nearby. And then 28% of those nearby searchers make a purchase. So it does drive actual sales, not just rankings. And the three steps are basically the same with a little bit of a twist. You wanna do your keyword research, find out what people are actually searching. And then for relevance, you're not really ranking your website. So that's where the twist comes in. You're actually ranking your Google My Business profile. So you need to go and set up a Google My Business profile, and then you want to make sure you're targeting the right categories because that's how you tell Google that you're relevant for different searches. And then you wanna build up your reputation, and the way you build up your Google My Business reputation is with citations and reviews. Everyone knows online reviews. Those are you know, when people go online, leave you a review. Uh, you wanna be getting those on an ongoing basis. And then you also want to be getting citations, which are mentions of your name, address, and phone number. So the abbreviation is NAP, N-A-P, which stands for name, address, phone number. You want to get uh, a lot of citations uh, with the same exact name, address, and phone number that's listed in your Google My Business profile. Um, and you want to get those in a lot of different uh, uh, business directories, that's a great way to get those. And you can also get citations by doing press releases. And I'm not going to read this, but here's a local SEO success story, just to show you that this does work. You can get ranked very quickly. This is from Barney and he said, uh, within a month, 
he actually started um, ranking and he started working on a project that came in directly from Google Plus Local, which is now called Google My Business or uh, Google My Business. Yeah. All right. Here's a quick recap. Went through the three R's. Went through two tactics to rank in 30 days or less. Now the fourth R is my favorite. It's revenue. <clears throat> so the goal of SEO is uh, it's not to get ranked number one. It's really to drive leads and sales, and you definitely don't want to lose sight of that. You want to be tracking your leads and sales, and that should be your number one metric. Uh, and it really comes down to three factors. You want to have really compelling website copy. That's why you know, one of the key takeaways today, hopefully, that you've gotten is uh, you want to write your website copy with, with sales in mind, not for search engines. You want to have social proof. Uh, what I mean by that is reviews, testimonials on your website. I find a lot of businesses don't have those, and that uh, will certainly hurt sales. And then you want to have a CTA or call to action. Um, again, I find out a lot of websites are missing some kind of call to action, so it's not clear what you want the customer, prospective customer to do to actually turn into a customer and make a purchase. Second bullet point is a lead magnet. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with that, uh, it's a, a really critical part of any online marketing strategy. And that's because the reality with online marketing is that the vast majority of anyone that's coming to your site, the vast majority of your visitors are not going to contact you or make a purchase. They're just going to leave. It could be upwards of 90 to 98% of your traffic is, is going to just leave. And that means you need some kind of tactic in place to collect contact information. That's where a lead magnet comes in. Um, that's why all of these sites are trying to get your email addresses. That's, uh, that's a lead magnet. Let's say you're on an e-commerce site and they offer you a coupon. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to give you a, a discount coupon in exchange for your email so then they can follow up if you don't make a purchase. And that's what you need to do on your site as well. If you don't have an e-commerce site, then you can offer some kind of free information, like a free guide. If you go to MainStreetRI.com, you'll see on our homepage, we have a, a, a free guide that we offer. And then we have lots of other uh, checklists and different tools that we offer. Those are lead magnets to get contact information like email addresses. And then you can use email marketing to follow up and convert those leads. And the third key factor here is uh, comes back to keyword research. You want to make sure you're targeting those buying intent keywords, and you're getting your your ranking for keywords that your actual prospective customers are searching. And then I also want to urge you to be tracking your return on investment. And the tool I recommend is Google Analytics. You can go to analytics.google.com. It's totally free. Sign up get the code on your site, and then you want to set up goals for any um, of the key actions on your site that you want to track. And then automatically you can start to see uh, how much traffic you're getting from SEO, and then how much of that traffic is uh, converting into leads and sales. All right, fifth and final R here is responsibility. It really comes down to answering this question, who is responsible for your SEO? Is it you, is it an employee, or is it uh, an agency or a consultant? <clears throat> you need to obviously define that. Uh, I also want to emphasize the point that SEO is not a set it and forget it strategy. That's another misconception. There's a lot of upfront work to get your website, quote, optimized, um, and that's the on-page SEO work. Uh, it's what we call an SEO tune-up. And that's um, really the, the second R, getting, making your website relevant. And then on an ongoing basis, there's the work to build up your reputation. And then finally, I, I always recommend to businesses to, that you learn the basics of SEO before you try to delegate this. Even, um, you know, even if you're going to just completely be hands off and hire a consultant or an agency, it's really important to understand the basics 
especially if you're starting to uh, look for an agency or consultant, uh, you want to make sure you have a good understanding of the basics and a good understanding of what not to do so that you uh, you hire the right person. And hopefully by attending today, you now know uh, what to look out for. And this slide here, these are not my kids. This is just a, a funny picture I, I thought that I found online. And it's to emphasize this idea that Google updates are not, not scary events. Um, that's something I hear a lot from business owners. They are worried about investing in SEO because they're scared that the Google Google's algorithm is going to change, and then they're you know all that hard work will be wasted. It's actually not how it it's not how that works, and it's actually the opposite mindset that you want to have because Google updates are really opportunities because again Google's trying to weed out the sites that don't belong on the first page of Google. So when that happens, they make those updates, <clears throat> make their tweaks to the algorithm. They're trying to get rid of the websites that don't belong, and that makes room for all the websites that are following best practices to move up higher in the rankings. All right, before we get to Q&A, I do want to go through the, the special offer here. And it's a, uh, it's a bundle of three step-by-step -step trainings. And again, we sell these on our site. You can go to MainStreetROI.com forward slash training. You'll see these sold uh, for $97. So the first one here is the complete SEO tune-up, and that is, um, again, making your website relevant for your target keywords. So we go through that process, teach you how to do it. There's also the local SEO formula. That's all the steps you need to take to rank high in those local map results. And then the third course is introduction to SEO analytics which dives uh, into Google Analytics, how to get that set up properly, uh, how to run the important reports for uh, SEO specifically, uh, as well as the other tools, and tra uh, the other tracking tools you need to monitor your SEO. So each of those is sold for $97. That's a total value of $291. And uh, we're offering that to attendees for only $97. So it's basically get three for the price of one, you can get that bundle at MainStreetROI.com forward slash SEO bundle. And if you're not interested in training, before we get to Q&A, <laughs> um, so I realize some people just don't want to uh, learn, go through all the training courses and do it, do it themselves. So if you're not interested in that, I do want to offer you a, uh, a free SEO assessment. I'll launch that. <clears throat> so it's a poll. Uh, if you're interested, just answer yes or maybe. Uh, if you're not interested, there's no. You don't need help at this time. And uh, just to clarify what an SEO assessment is, that's uh, an opportunity for you to have one of our SEO analysts review your site. Uh, we'll go through a, a checklist that uh, will identify opportunities to improve your SEO. All right, looks like most people have voted, so I'm going to close out in five, four, three, two, one. Okay. And I know there are some questions here. Just so you know, the um, the link to the bundle is in the upper left corner, uh, and then there is a re reminder when I close out to just complete the brief survey. So a reminder, again, uh, we will be sending the replay as well as a link to the slides, and that typically is sent within 24 hours, uh, so you should get that by uh, tomorrow around noon. All right, let me uh, see what other questions I missed here. Um, uh, Pierre said, what do you think the right number of links is for a website or per page? So there's definitely no target number of links. There's no right or wrong number of links. Um, if you think about it, let's say you created just a, a, a really good, um, uh, just definitive guide to a topic in your industry, and then that got shared via social media and you just ended up with millions of links, that would be awesome. <laughs> there's, there's no penalty for getting a lot of links. 
uh, just as there's no penalty for getting you know too few links. <coughs> Um, okay, let me keep going down here. Uh, Ronald said, can people link to your website without you knowing it? If yes, how do you find out? That's a great question, and the answer is yes. People could be linking to your site right now, and you'd have no way of really knowing it unless you used a tool to look at the links to your site. And there are, there are lots of different tools out there. The tool I recommend is ahrefs.com. Uh, there's another tool called, it's from Moz, it's the Open Site Explorer tool. <clears throat> I've found that that's not as good as Ahrefs, though. Um, let me go through a couple more questions. I know we're running out of time here. If I don't get to your question, you can always follow up via email. Uh, you can email at info at MainStreetROI.com or just reply to the uh, replay email that we'll be sending out. Uh, let's see. So just combing through lots of questions here. Uh, Mike said, does the anchor text rule apply to submit buttons driving to our B2C store order now, or should it say order product name now? Um, so don't, Definitely don't uh, worry about your uh, your the the button text. <clears throat> um, if you did want to get your product name into the button, uh, you would need to put that into um, so that would be an image, and that would be the alt text. <clears throat> so you can put. Uh, keywords into alt text for images and alt text is what is read to people who cannot see um, they have a, a tool for their computer and it will actually read to them and it will read what the image should, should be and, and that is something that Google reads as well <clears throat> um, let's see I'm just let me just find one more good question here uh, sorry, there's just a lot I gotta comb through here. Uh, somebody is sending the same question over and over again. How or what kind of SEO would be suitable for online news portal? So you'd still follow the same process. This is the same process you would use for any type of website uh, as far as uh, you know optimizing your uh, news portal, you certainly want to be optimizing the titles of all of the uh, the articles um, and then uh, you know building up your reputation would uh, in that particular industry be forming uh, relationships with other um, uh, industry leaders, thought leaders in the news space and uh, by for forming those relationships uh, trying to get links from those sites. <clears throat> All right, we ran out of time. Again, I want to remind you about the SEO bundle in the upper left-hand corner. That's MainStreetRI.com forward slash SEO bundle. And then uh, when I close this out, uh, please do complete the brief survey. We use the um, uh, feedback to improve our future trainings. All right, everyone, enjoy the rest of your third, what is it today? Uh, sorry, it's, it's only Tuesday. Sorry, I do a lot of these trainings on Thursday. So enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and I uh, hope you have a great week. Take care.